all these famous questions that people ask non-stop, we will address in this lecture, and we will supply scientific proof to every one of these questions as I mentioned. For instance, to create a table, you don't have to be a genius. You learn one or two hours and you understand the concept, how it works. To create a computer, you need perhaps years of learning and experience. The computer indicates how great is the creator of the computer as opposed to somebody who just made a, a, a table. In that case, when we review our world, the brilliance of the creation of this world, billions of billions of stars and billions of galaxies, everything works in order. We look at the human being, which is the most sophisticated thing in nature, just the brain of the human being, 10 trillion connections, just for, for the argument's sake. If we take all the media companies in the world, all the telecommunication companies, all the satellites, all the wiring, every phone number that people has in the entire world, combine all of them together, it will not reach 1% of a brain of one individual. And this is one person only. Multiplied by 6.4 billion people that run around in this world, uh, look at the previous generation, adds all of them together, we're talking about tens of billions of people. Each one of them with the brain and ligaments and muscles and liver and heart and many other things. Is it possible to think that this entire creation was made by itself that some people are trying to claim? The answer is absolutely not. Nobody would ever believe that even a watch, if a person has a watch, and he claimed that the watch was made by a random explosion. He just walked on the street and there was an explosion and all the pieces came together and connected and now it's working for the last few hours. Nobody will take that person serious. On top of that, this is only a watch. Imagine trying to say that the brain of a person was created by some kind of development. It started with an explosion and slowly, slowly, you know, pieces came together into place and now it's working such a sophisticated computer. For those who didn't know, the brain is 80%, 80% water, 20% material. And the size of the brain is like the size of a, an orange, an average orange. And inside this brain, it's all connected in such a sophisticated way to claim that something like this was able to be created by itself without a creator, it's insane. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody even believed what he claimed for those people who claim that something like this can come out of just randomly. So the answer is, for sure there is a creator. The fact that we don't know him yet doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We see that everything that the human being needs in the world, he has plenty. For instance, oxygen. One minute without oxygen, a person died, or two or three minutes. But the point is that oxygen, everybody needs, everywhere in the world, there was always oxygen, everywhere. We never have shortage of oxygen anywhere we go. Imagine if sometimes there was no oxygen, we have to walk with balloons on our back for emergency that it will happen one day. How life would look. Then the second thing the person needs is water. You have water all over, 72% of the world is water. Then he needs food. We are not talking fancy food, just food to survive, bread. It's a few dollars a week, he can survive. Problem today is that people have big eyes and they want unlimited uh, pleasure and all kinds of uh, bombastic meals. Well, we're not talking about this kind of desires. We're talking just food to survive. The more luxurious is the thing that a person is after, it's getting harder to get it. Why? It's not a necessity. Then one of the other questions we have to address today, is it life after death, as Judaism claim? We have to prove all this. So let's start. According to the Torah, when the Jews received the Torah 3,320 years ago in Mount Sinai, there was 49 days after the exodus of Egypt. The Jews, the Hebrews I should say, were in Egypt for 210 years. Many generations of slavery. 
Finally, Moses was chosen by God to be the messenger, to be the leader, and take the Jews out of Egypt. As the famous classical story, the Jews exodus to Egypt through the ocean, and 49 days, which is exactly seven weeks after, they stood around Mount Sinai, millions of people, and saw God and Moses having a conversation. The truth is, that only the first two commandments from the ten were given to Moses publicly. Everybody heard the first two commandments. I am the God that took you out of Egypt. That's the first commandment. The second commandment that everybody heard was, you should not have any other God but me. When God came to say the third commandment, as we read in the Torah in the chapter of Jethro, the Jews were panicking, they just couldn't tolerate the event. And they say to Moses, please, we can't take this. We're very scared. Why don't you go up to the mountain, speak to this God, and everything he wants us to do, we are willing to do. No questions asked. Later we'll understand. First we do. After all the proofs we saw, we don't have that much to investigate. That was the idea. And Moses told them, don't be afraid. God is not here to arm you. He's only testing you to see are you faithful enough to follow his laws. And that's how it started. That's basically the beginning, the foundation of Judaism. So we review in the Torah many of the things that affect our life every day. And it's all come down to one question. Is it possible to prove 100% scientifically that this Torah is divine, is really the word of God, especially when we have a combination of written and oral Torah, two Torahs, one is the written, famous book that everybody knows all over the world. But the most important one is the oral laws. It's all the instructions that were given to Moses and he passed it to the rabbis and from generation to generation. All of that we have to address. Is it possible to prove 100%? All this thing is divine and that's what we're going to do now. The beginning point, if the Torah was given by God to us as we know. We cannot find any mistakes there. If we're going to find a human error in the Torah, it would make everything else doubtable. Plenty of doubts. How do I know? It's not the second mistake. How can I rely on a book that I already found one human error there?